between, uh, between the two price movements, between um, India and South Africa, basically, two emerging, um, two emerging markets. Now, of course, when an analysis is performed on these um, similar but different uh, price movements, some really interesting things emerge, and that's uh, um, what we're going to be speaking about today. Let's have a look at the same time period uh, for the American market. I'm just going to change um, workspace, and let's move forward to um, 2006. And um, uh, right, let's just find the same time period, 2007 to 2009. And all right, where's 2007, 2009? Somewhere over here, 2007 to 2009. All right, so in the U.S. markets, um, this is the same price movement that, um, that uh, I'm speaking about from 2007 through to 2009. And, of course, uh, most of you will know that um, there's a, a famous straddled trough that, um, that everybody, everybody discusses positioned in August of 2007. All right, uh, there it is, the four-and-a-half-year um, Straddle trough of, of August 2007. That's its position right over there, and you can see it. It's a typical straddle trough. It's not very prominent. It has fairly um, symmetrical price movement to each side of it, um, but uh, there it is over there. And um, uh, uh, it's, it's quite tricky, sort of uh, switching between between these different price movements. But but um, what I'd like you to to get used to looking at here is is how the price movements are um, similar, but uh, fundamentally quite different. Here's August of 2007. Uh, there is a trough there in the um, Indian Sensex. There is also a trough, but it's not nearly as prominent. Let's have a look at the South African market. Oh, um, South African market, August 2007, there it is. There is also a trough over there, but it is overshadowed by this trough in uh, early 2008. Okay? So, uh, what am I saying? I'm flipping between charts, and uh, um, I hope it's not all, uh, it's not all too confusing. Um, uh, what, what I'm saying um, about um, using emerging markets to study um, uh, to, to study the American market or to compare the analysis with any other market is that the price movements of emerging markets or of any market anywhere around the world tends to be very similar. There are uh, many things that, uh, that they have in common. And um, uh, um, I keep trying to show you similar sort of uh, zoom scales. There's the South African market again. Um, you know, that market movement looks fairly similar to that market movement. But there are differences. Okay, um, and um, what tends to happen is is that um, a trough that is uh, is very prominent in one particular market is present in another market, but it's not as prominent. So what I find happens is that when the South African market might be experiencing a four and a half year cycle trough. Um, other markets might be approaching that four and a half year cycle trough, and they will experience a trough um, almost on exactly the same day, but um, uh, it, it, it will be of, of less prominence. So what tends to happen is that the markets around the world all tend to move um, uh, very similarly and uh, with a lot of synchronicity, a lot of commonality, as Hearst called it. Um, so they're all moving up and down um, very much at the same time, but, um, but the, the shapes of the cycles bend slightly and, and, and a trough that's much more prominent in one particular market will be less prominent in another market. But what, um, what we can do is we can look at those movements and uh, we can use those movements to confirm um, uh, whether really, really long-term um, uh, troughs are in place. Um, I, I hope, I hope that's, that's, that's making sense. Um, so let's go back to uh, what we were looking at um, a moment ago from 2007 uh, to 2009. And let's talk about the trough in August of 2007, which in the American market um, was phased as being a trough of the four-and-a-half-year cycle. Right? Um, 
this is, um, uh, let me show you the phasing there. Okay. All right. This is the Indian market. I have to keep uh, reminding us uh, which market we're looking at. This is the Indian market we're looking at. A very simple line on median chart. Um, price movement from 2007 to 2009. Okay. Um, in August of uh, 2007, there was a um, trough, um, which, as you can see, has been phased as a trough of the 20-week cycle. Right. Let me uh, change back to daily. Perhaps that's easier to look at. Uh, there it is. In August of 2007, there was a trough of the 20-week cycle. Prior to that, in March, there was a trough, um, which according to this analysis was a trough of the four-and-a-half-year cycle. Okay? So um, in between those two troughs, there was a period of 22, uh, 22 weeks. Right? A fairly long 20-week cycle. Um, now, that, this is the Sensex. Now let's have a look at the South African market. Again, same period. Right the beginning of 2007 to the very beginning of 2009. Change it to daily. Let's turn on our phasing. Okay. August of 2007, um, there was a trough. Um, it, in fact, occurred a little bit later, um, as you can see from the phasing. And um, if we have a look at that as a candlestick chart, um, you, can see, um, you can see why that, uh, why that occurred a little bit later, but let's not go into too much detail. Um, so there was a trough, which here has been phased as a trough of the 40-week cycle. Okay? So there's a trough in August, but it's not a trough of the twinkle as it was in the Sensex, but it is a trough of the 40-week cycle in the South African market. And uh, what about March when there was a trough in the, in the Sensex, which we said was a four-and-a-half-year uh, um, cycle trough? Um, well, here there was a trough in March, but it is much less prominent, and it's a trough of only the 40-day cycle. And there was... Uh, if we zoom back, if we go back, and there was a trough of the 20-week uh, cycle, which has been positioned um, very early in 2007. Now let's have a look at what was happening in the um, American markets over that same time period. Um, here is, uh, let's turn on that phasing. Um, here is that trough in August, which in the American markets was a trough of the four-and-a-half-year cycle. And here is the same trough in March, which in the um, American markets, according to this analysis, of course, was a trough of the 40-week cycle. Okay? And there were 23.1 uh, weeks in between those two, in between those two uh, troughs. So what am I saying? What I'm saying is that when you do an analysis of, uh, of an emerging market, your analysis is going to come out different because the price movement is indeed different. Okay, um, if you if you get to a point where you're really confident about that analysis, um, it it will differ from the analysis that you're doing on the American market, um, uh, um, but usually it will differ um, not not uh, um, in, in, in very largely in terms of where those troughs are placed, but it will differ in terms of the magnitude of the trough at each um, at each trough in price as I've tried to point out here with the August 2007 trough. The August 2007 trough in the American markets, most people believe, was a trough of the four-and-a-half-year cycle. That same trough was a trough in the South African market of the 20-week uh, cycle and in the Indian market of the 20-week um, uh, uh, cycle and in the South African market of the 40-week cycle. So the troughs are all happening round about the same time but, um, but they have different magnitude, okay? Um, so uh, how can we use an analysis that we might be doing on the Sensex, for instance, um, to, to, uh, to clarify what's happening in the American markets? Well, let's go back to, um, to a time when um, a, a really major um, uh, trough was being formed, um, uh, 2002, 2003, okay? And um, let me see, uh, let me, uh, what sort of time period should I zoom in on? I think perhaps I will zoom in 
from uh, beginning of 2002 to beginning of 2004. There we go, 2002 to 2004. Okay, let's turn off the phasing just for the moment. And um, let me go back to the uh, daily. Okay, this is the, um, this is the American market. Uh, no, I beg your pardon, it's the, it's the Sensex, it's the Indian market. And this is the, the shape of the price movement from the beginning of 2002 to the, beginning, uh, to the um, beginning of 2004. Okay, I'd like to point out um, three fairly prominent troughs that you see here. One of them is in June of 2002, one of them is in October of 2002, and uh, one of them is in um, April of 2003. Three very prominent troughs. Okay. I think you can see them there. Uh, I don't need to draw them. I'm tempted to pull out the whiteboard, but I won't. Um, let's uh, just remind ourselves. August 2002, October 2002, April 2002. Now, let's have a look at the South African market for, for the same time period. I uh, just need to um, zoom to it. Um, right. Where were we? 2002 to 2004. So that's um, from there to there. Let's turn off phasing so we're not confused by that. All right. Now, we had three prominent troughs in the Indian market. The um, first was August 2002. Here, August 2002, we have another prominent trough. It's not, in, interestingly, at exactly the same time in August, okay? But it's still in August of 2002. There was another one in October of 2002. Here, there is a trough in October of 2002, but I hope you can see, and I am going to turn on my whiteboard quickly just to, um, just to demonstrate this. Um, right, um, there's August 2002. Um, October 2002 um, is, is not a very prominent trough at all, but it is still a trough in the price movement. And then April of, 2000, of 2003 is indeed a, uh, a, a very prominent um, uh, price trough. Okay, so if, if we were to rank these, pri these three price troughs, we've got August, then we've got October, and then we've got April. If, if we were to rank them, What's the most prominent trough? Well, it's obviously the April trough, right, in 2003. Obviously, the most important trough um, in the South African market was April of 2003. The next most important was um, August of 2002, and the, the least important of those three troughs was October of 2002. And, uh, and if I show you the phasing analysis, um, you'll see that, in fact, the phasing analysis re reflects that ranking perfectly because it has a, um, a four-and-a-half-year cycle trough at the most prominent uh, um, trough in April of 2003, and it has um, a 40-week cycle trough in August of 2002, and it has a 20-week trough in um, – uh, no, I beg your pardon, it has an 80-day trough in October of 2002, right? So the phasing analysis um, reflects the ranking, okay? So um, let me go back to the Indian market and um, let's just rank these troughs. We didn't, uh, we didn't do that. But if we rank these three troughs, I would have to say that October of 2002 was the most prominent trough, right? Because it's the lowest one. It's a very simple way of ranking it. Then the, the second most prominent trough, um, it's hard to distinguish really between, um, between April um, of 2003 or August of 2002, and, and two. very very hard to distinguish, um, uh, very hard to, to rank, uh, choose between those two. So let's have a look at the phasing analysis here.